Hey guys, welcome to 12 Tone. Today we're going to talk about guitar. We're not going to focus on how to play a guitar because there's already plenty of tutorials on YouTube for that. We're going to focus instead on how to write for guitar. Guitar is one of the most versatile instruments and you can hear it in almost any style you can think of, but there are a lot of similarities across those styles and how guitars are used. Before we talk about how we write for guitar though, we first need to address how guitars are constructed. A guitar, as you've probably seen, consists of a body, a neck, and usually six strings. Each string plays a specific note when struck, and a guitarist alters the pitch of that note by placing their fingers on the strings at certain points on the neck, marked by frets. When played open with no fret held, the strings, from lowest to highest, play E, A, D, G, B, and then E again two octaves up. Notice that most of these are a fourth apart. That'll be important later. Each fret up above what's called the nut raises the pitch of that string by a half step. So if you played the E string, holding down the third fret, you would hear a G. One thing to note is that the fifth fret on most strings is the same pitch as the open string one string higher. This adds a lot of redundancy on the guitar neck, and most notes can be played in many different places. One of the simplest ways to write for guitar is to just play full chords. One thing to be careful of though is what are called voicings. Voicings are a specific arrangement of notes within a chord. So for instance, this and this are both D minor, but they're played in different voicings giving them different sounds. Because the guitar strings are tuned mostly in fourths, it can get tricky to voice chords in simple stacks of thirds like we might on a keyboard. Instead, if you're going to provide the entire voicing, it's often useful to think about what's played on each string and what fret that note is. It's generally safe to write voicings that stretch over three or maybe four frets, but beyond that, things can get tricky. Fortunately, if you're not a guitarist, you can just use rhythmic slash notation like this and leave the exact voicing decisions to the player. Similar to chord playing is arpeggios, which we talked about here. Now, arpeggios can be tricky to write because you can't rely on rhythmic slash notation like you might with full chords, so you're stuck considering the entire voicing and any rhythmic shapes you may want. Other than that, it's similar to chord writing. One trick, if you don't want to concern yourself with even the rhythm, is basic slash notation or comping slashes. Here, you just put non-rhythmic slashes through the bar, write the progression on top, and write comp, short for a company, underneath. You can also include directions like sparse comp, heavy comp, comp around melody, or comp with arpeggios to give more specific instructions. This leaves most decisions up to the player, which can be dangerous if you don't know their abilities, but if you're confident that they can make something cool, this method can save considerable time. The last primary tool in guitar writing is lines. There are many different types of lines that guitars can play. They can play the melody in an instrumental piece or if you want to give the vocalist a break. They can improvise a solo over chord changes. They can play background lines that add interest behind the melody, or they can be a central riff that the song or section is built around. Generally, these lines are a single note at a time, but can also include what are called double or triple stops, where one attack includes multiple simultaneous notes. Be careful when writing these, though. Like with chords, you have to make sure that they can be voiced comfortably. One final technique, which is a little more advanced, is what's called a chord melody, where the guitar plays both a chord comp and a melodic line on top simultaneously. This can be difficult to play, so if you aren't sure your guitarist is capable of it, it's probably best to avoid, but if they can, it can be a really cool effect. Another option, which you see in many rock bands, is to simply have two guitars playing lead and rhythm. The lead player plays lines, melodies, and solos, while the rhythm player comps and plays chords. In fact, there's so many things you can do with multiple guitars that will leave the rest for its own episode. So that's writing for guitar. Try it out on your own, and keep on rocking.